Yeah, so open up iTerm. Okay. Okay, so you're probably in like your tilde slash directory. Actually, let's let's do another quick little setup thing with iTerm. So if you notice when I open up my iTerm, it's like in my desktop and yours is probably not. Um, you can set it up so when your iTerm opens up, it's in a specific directory. And also when you open a new pane, it opens up in a specific directory too. This is actually gonna be nice because like if I CD into like my DPL demo and CD into week one and then split a new pane, like that's already in week one. So it's nice because I don't have to like CD into that. So let's get that set up for you. Um, once again, it's, it's something that, you know, takes a couple minutes to do and saves you like maybe three or four seconds. But over time, that three or four seconds adds up to like hours. Um, so let's go to iTerm and uh, preferences, or you can just do a command comma to open up preferences. And then you're going to go to advanced. Or where is it? Arrangements, keys, profiles. There it is. Profiles. And you can go to uh, this working directory. Click on advanced configuration and this edit button. So we got three options. Um, this is. This first option is where iTerm is going to open up when you first open up iTerm. So for this, you could like, maybe I want iTerm to always open up in, I, I like it to honestly open up in the desktop, but you could even like have it open up in like your DPL folder if you wanted. I'm going to have mine open up in the desktop. So I'm going to, I can just CD into my desktop because I need to put the directory there. So find out, figure out where you want to have this open up. And then you just can do a print working directory. And then you can just copy and paste that inside of here. And now your directory, when you open up iTerm, this is where it's going to open up um, when you open up a new iTerm. And for these two, I would recommend using these two um, options, the reuse previous sessions directory. So that's going to do it when you split into a new pane or split into a new tab, it's going to open you up in whatever directory you're in. And then you just click OK. And yeah, you could try it out just by quitting iTerm and open it back up. Let's see if that's, I'm in my desktop. How do you get into that again? Get into what? Into, go into the, to get, after advanced, you click on advanced and then what? Yeah, so profiles advanced and click edit. Edit on what? Right here with this advanced configuration, the edit button. I don't see that working directory. Oh, Jen. Yeah, okay. Oh, I clicked advanced over at the end. I'm not in general. You're in general. You need to be in yeah, profiles. Oh, but Jen. over there, over there at the right, it says advanced, and you say go into advanced. That's over on or the very right, right. tab. Go to, it's pro, go to profiles. And then, yeah, in profiles under the working directory, there's this advanced configuration and then edit. Okay. I just clicked the other advanced button. Oh. And then, yeah, just 
wherever you it, want to open up, you just put in the directory right there. Is there like a save button you're supposed to do? Because I just did that exact same. And now that I reopen my terminal, it's still putting me at the same place. Um, you do a command quit on your iTerm. Don't remember just closing it with the red X. That's not going to close it. Uh, so I think that's command. probably why then. Yeah. I'm going to try that. You said it's command what? Command Q. Command Q. Right. Yeah, it's kind of, I think that's kind of a little obnoxious thing about Apple when you like quit that, it doesn't actually quit it, just closes it. You can also in there, uh, James, let everyone know you can set the uh, font in the font size on your iTerm so it's easier to read. Cool. How do you do that? I should just do that so I don't have to always do the, it's the, the same section you went to for. Uh, Send up the, the shortcut, but it, you go under text. So profiles, text. Text. Oh, and down there where it says font, you can choose the size. That way it's always bigger. So you, when you start it, same thing I have to do so I can see what I'm, I'm reading on the screen. Like 20. Oh, I should not dare change my font. Oh, that's good. Okay. I'm not changing my font. Okay. Cool. Oh. Okay, so there's that. Um, so yeah, go ahead and CD into um, your week one directory. And for this one, we're gonna do this command. We're gonna do a, and I'll, I'll throw this out in Slack. Okay, so I slacked it out, but it's a yarn create react dash app. And then this is the command to create a react app. And then we just give it a name. So you can call it whatever I'm calling. I'm just going to call this first project. And that's going to start building out this react app. Sorry, somehow I accidentally undownloaded iTerm2. It said I have to read, put it on. So I'm, I'm going to be behind for a sec. I just, I just, I, I can, yeah. What was that? You. I accidentally, I got it back, but somehow it said I don't have iTerm and it said download again or so, or read. I don't know. So what, what did you, you download? I, don't know. I lost iTerm2. I clicked on iTerm and it said this is download from the internet and I don't know. Well, okay. I have it back though, but I missed what you just said. Okay, so out in Slack, um, do this. So CD into, so you do have iTerm, right? Yeah. Okay, so CD into that, um, into your week one directory and run the command that's in Slack. Okay. This yarn create react app first proj. Cool. And I'll, so we can see here, um, these are like the two commands that we're going to want to do next. Because um, if I look, if I do an LS to list the contents of my week one directory, see, I now have a first project directory, so I can CD into that. When I run that, um, it says command not found. Yarn, what command yarn? Yeah, the... The yarn one. So if you don't have yarn. It must have got undownloaded when I was uh, yeah. fixing this yesterday. Try it, run this, do a brew install yarn. Okay, so I'm in the week one folder. So in when I'm in the week one folder, I just get the thing from Slack and just cut just that. Yeah, the yarn create react app first project. Cool. All I type is yarn create, or do I have to type something else before that? That just copy and paste that whole thing. Okay. All right, that worked. Cool. All right. 
So now I, I CD into that project. Notice how already there's a repository in here. So when we create a React app, it comes with by default with a Git repository. Um, and then I'm going to run this next command. So I'll throw these out in Slack. So we CD into that project, and then I'm going to run this yarn start command, which is going to, what this is doing is it's starting up a, um, so the little server for this React app, and there we go. So there's, there's what, that's what you want to see. So I'm also. I just did, so I did the I copied the first one. Now what was the next thing? It's CD into first project and yarn start. Those are the two commands you're gonna want to run. CD first project. It's in Slack. Yes, first proj. You want to CD into that thing we just created and then run yarn start. So after I did yarn start, I had gotten a pop up that says a control sequence attempted to clear scroll back history. Allow this in the future. Yeah. Hit, yes. Is it always good? always allow? Yeah. Did it? it yeah. I, yeah. Go ahead and allow that. All right. Thanks. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little poll in Slack. Um, just if you got to this point, you see the atom. I guess this is like an atom. Give me a thumbs up if you do, or check, or thumbs down if you don't. Okay, I did the CD first project. Then what was next? Yarn start. Yarn start. And then yeah, running yarn start will automatically open up this your your browser or open up this tab right here. Okay. Cool. And if you see this, this is good. This is all um, we need to see. If you don't or you're having an issue, then we can just look at it after lunch. I just wanted to have like everyone by tomorrow be able to see this. Should my computer sound like it's going to explode? Sound like it's going to explode? <laughs> the fans are just running. I don't <laughs> I think it should be that intensive. But um, yeah. So yeah, just, just to like um, kind of demo this. So I have a server running now. Notice I can't like type anything in my prompt now. Um, and that's, that's fine. I want that because I need this to be kind of running. So it's like blocking up my terminal. And I could do a command D or wait, yes, yeah, a command D hopefully. Yeah, command D to split up a new pane. And since we have that set up, now I'm also in this first project. That's why it's kind of nice to have that little setup we just did with terminal. Cause now I'm already in this directory. I could do a code dot open up this project. I mean, we're not gonna do anything with this today, but here's when we did the yarn create React app first project, this is what it built out for us. It built out this like folder structure for us. And you know, it says right here, like, you know, edit source app.js and save to reload. If I go to source app.js, see what looks like a JavaScript function and what looks like some HTML inside of this function, which is kind of weird to have HTML inside of JavaScript, inside of like a JavaScript function. But yeah, I could go in here, change it. I saved it. There we go, there's my web page. So that's, that's, that's what we're gonna start working on tomorrow. But the important part is, or by, by the end of the today, I just want to make sure everyone can get to this screen. 
So cool. That is that. Um, looks like most of us are there. So that's cool. I'm going to, yeah, if if you didn't get here, just let me know like during lunchtime and then we'll we'll figure it out. Um, but sweet. Where is I okay, I need to like get rid of this. Cool. So let's go back to just uh, vanilla JavaScript. And I think what I want to do to start out today is just go through some of the homework with you. Go through some of the examples because um, you spent yesterday maybe trying them out. Um, did you feel like those were challenging? Did you get them done? Or what, what's kind of the consensus on that? struggled with the functions part yeah i felt like the first half it was uh not too tricky you know once you kind of get in flow you get the hang of it but i felt like the second half like with the functions and everything it was getting tricky cool yeah so i mean it, it's kind of hard because when you first learn javascript it's it's kind of like you just have to learn you, you kind of just have to get all like the loops the conditionals the functions the variables arrays objects you kind of just have to like take that all in at once. And then we can kind of start showing some examples and go into a little more like clarification and like detail about it. So it should start to click. So let's, let's do that today. And what, yeah, really what I want to do today is kind of, um, kind of consider this a little bit of a review day of what we learned on Monday and Tuesday. And then I'm going to introduce a couple new concepts. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this homework file and I'm going to copy and paste it. So and I'm fine if you do this on your homework, if you if you want to follow along with your actual homework. Um, you could create a new file, like if you want to kind of keep yours separate from mine, you could create like a new like homework lecture file. But okay, so what I'm gonna do is you want us to keep this React still running? No, you can you can you can close out of the VS code and close out of the, the React. All right. Because we're 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 done with React for today. Cool. <clears throat> so I'm in week one. Um, what do I have in here? I'm gonna go ahead and CD. Do I have homework one? Or did I call it JS? One. Open this up in code. Oh, sweet. I already have it here. So yeah, you might want to like if you if you're working on your homework, you could maybe make like a new file. Maybe like homework one, like lecture.js if you want to keep these separate so you can kind of go back and forth. Doesn't really matter to me and then I'll go ahead and you know paste that in there and I'll also paste this in Slack if you need it again. And then I'm also gonna make like a little um, a file, maybe call this like sandbox.js. This is really, I'm just creating this file as a, a place to <clears throat> Go like maybe go try out some stuff. It's like a sandbox. It's like a playground. Like here's a place I can go in and kind of experiment with some stuff. Okay. So yeah, I think I, I'm going to skip this first part. Um, and I, I kind of just want to look at the functions. And then as we're going through these, let's um, we'll also do like a review of what we've learned. Okay. So before before we do that, let's just do let's just do a quick review of like the high level concepts of what we've learned. So first we have the variables. And in JavaScript um, we'll use the let const and var. You know, for now uh, I'm going to say let and var are very like are the same. There are differences for sure. But 
For our intents and purposes, let and var, var are doing the same thing. They're declaring variables that, you know, we can change. Um, we have const. Const, remember, is a variable that can't change. So a variable just is, um, we use, and I'm gonna, I'll use the let, cause let is, I'm, I'll just say this is, you know, new and preferred. So that is, for now, that will just be the difference. Let is preferred over to uh, the bar keyword. So let's say I have like an age variable and you know, it's like 21. So our variable, we, we use an identifier to declare it. We give it a name and we give it a value. And a variable, you know, can be any type of data. So I could have a number, I could have, you know, in an array. Um, I could have a object. So with that, we have these variables, they, they have a name, they have a type. And remember with the name, I want to be descriptive of what I'm representing. Because then this way, when we when we're using our code and you know you can't see those declarations, you know, you know these are being descriptive about what they are. Oh, age, that's probably someone's age, person. Oh, that's probably a person, right? <clears throat> cool. And then yeah, remember with const, const is something. we don't expect to change. So I could have something like pi, you know, that's 3.14. So there, there's kind of two, two ways to think about constants. So you could have something like pi that is, you know, that that's just something in the world that never changes, right? So not, nothing changes, but you can also think about it in the context of your app, like, do I expect this variable to change in my app? So that can be another thing. Like I could have like a, I could make current temperature a const. Let's call it current temp because I can't spell temperature. Now current temperature in the real world is not, um, is not a constant, like it changes. But maybe in the app I'm writing, I would have, like I would use this variable current temp, but in my app, I would not expect that to ever change. So I would, I could declare it as a const. And so if I, and with um, just a JavaScript thing, so notice JavaScript doesn't care if I, upcase these variables, but what you'll see if the variable is like a constant in like the real world, um, you uppercase it like pi, I would uppercase. If it's like a variable that, you know, maybe you not necessarily, it's not like this hard coded constant, um, then you use lowercase or just a camel case. That's a more little if that's confusing, you can just use lowercase on everything for now. But the, but the, do those two distinctions make sense about constants? It's like, is it a constant in the real world or do I expect to be a constant in, the, in my app? Like I don't expect it to change in my app. Cool. Um, so those are variables. We also talked about, um, you know, 
uh, conditions. So that's basically just our if condition. You know, do stuff. So this is the way we can branch in our code. So you know, if age is greater than you know eighteen. Also dot log. You know, can vote. You know, cannot vote. Now that needs to be greater or equal to 18, right? That's where we kind of need to keep track. That off by one error is kind of some of those spots we can get ourselves into trouble. Let's say I like uh, in my person class, I like have felony true. So, you know, I could do like, you know, person, I can now use this person.age. If that person.age is greater than 18 and does not person dot has felony. So we can start combining, you know, we can use our and or not operators to combine conditions, you know, to say like, can someone vote? Yeah, just a just a second. I was kind of I was trying to take notes there. So will you explain that last part just again real fast? This last part, yeah. So yeah. Um, just with with a conditional, you know, we can we can come up with um, kind of like a math statement, you know, where we can and like we would say it in English, hey, if someone is over than eighteen and they do not have a felony, then they can vote. Right. So with a, like an and statement, um, you know, these both have to be true for someone to be able to vote. Okay. So it's saying that they have to be 18 and that they uh, can't have a felony? Yeah. Now, oh yeah, I was gonna ask, what is the exclamation point doing? That remember is a not. So, Per, so person has felony, that's a Boolean. And in this case, it's true. So I'm gonna just, just kind of like, I think the best way to do these conditionals is to like how you would say them in English. And don't, don't even think about the code. Like how do you determine if someone can vote? If they're over the age of, if they're 18 or older and they do not have a felony then you can vote. If that's not true, then you can't vote. That's exactly what this is saying. If the person is over the age of 18 and they do not have a felony. So then we usually get into like this condition, like we can kind of think about like determining whether or not someone can vote. That, you know, that, that might be a little bit of chunk of work, right? That might be a little logic. We might want to like spend some time doing that. So what would be a good thing to do? Like if you're writing an application and you know, you want to check if your person can vote, you'd be like, oh man, you know, I should probably put that in a function. I should put all that logic in a function to see whether or not someone can vote. And then I can reuse that logic. Because let's say like I have two people at person one and person two. And so here I could kind of just like manually like check, hey, does person one age? What's actually called? Let's give them names. I'm going to name these a little better. I'm going to have Bob and John. Just so this is a little... By naming our variables better, it's going to make our code more readable. See if John age is greater than or equal to 18 and John has felony, does not have a felony. If 
by renaming our variables, like it just, it makes our code more readable. And then we can like do a little quote here and say, you know, John dot name. So I want to grab the name can vote. And then I'll just copy this here. John dot name cannot vote. And then I, if I wanted to do the same thing for Bob, I could copy and paste this. I'll say, okay, Bob dot age and just switch where it says John to Bob. And then let's, let's just run this in the terminal right now and just see if this is working. So I could do node sandbox.js. So it's saying they both cannot vote. Oh yeah, because they both have a felony. Let's um let's have this person not have a felony. So Bob does not have so Bob can vote and John cannot. You know, maybe I want to test, you know, Sally, who's like 17 does not have to tell me like she shouldn't be able to vote. And so I can copy and paste this. Well, you know, this if else statement is nice because it, it has the logic to do, um, to like check and it's doing it right. But now I'm copying and pasting a lot. It's going to get messy. I'm, you know, I have this, but there's very much the same logic if someone can vote, right? I just really need to know your age and if you have a felony, and then I'll tell you if you can vote or not. So, and then I need your name so I can give this nice little message. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a function to abstract, like to reuse this logic. <clears throat> so let's just do this as like this function that can vote. Now I'm now what do I need um, for someone to vote? I could think of this as two different ways. I could say I can I could either take like a person object that has like name, age, and has felony. Or I could write a, a can vote that has that where I give them those exact same parameters. So name, age, has felony. For this, let's just do it like as a person object. And I'm just going to call this person. I don't need to call it person object. So with this, I am expecting person to be an object. You know, that has a name, age, and has a felony key. And I'm expecting name to be a string. I'm expecting age to be a number. And I'm expecting has felony to be a Boolean. So this is what I what I meant by like this week when I'm saying, you know, you, you, you're going to need to be aware of like kind of mentally behind the scenes aware of the types of data you're gonna be working with. <clears throat> and just like, don't think about this in code. Think about this in like English. If someone came up to me and they're like, hey, can you tell me, will you tell me if I can vote or not? It's like, yeah, I can tell you, but you need to give me your age and whether or not you have a felony. It's kind of got to take that the way we think about it in English or like your native language and convert it to JavaScript. So let's take this logic here. I can just copy this if statement with Bob. Now, instead of using Bob, I'm going to use just any person. So as long as the person age is greater or equal to 18 or they do not have a felony, then that person.name can vote. Cool. 
So now instead of doing this here, I now have this function defined that does that does this logic. And so then I can do a can vote and I can pass it an actual person. Can vote Bob, can vote John. So now I can run this. I have a syntax error somewhere. Let John equal, oh, I already have John. So since I've declared this variable, I can't re-declare it. So I need to change the name to Sally. Bob can vote, John cannot vote. Now I can just pass it in Sally. And Sally cannot vote. So that's where functions start to come in. Like functions, we can take, you know, logic from our app, you know, we can and break it up into like a small chunk of work. Can vote. And why you, whenever I'm trying to run my terminal in JavaScript is not uh, running. It's not I'm, do what? I'm doing, so I named mine sandbox.js and then I'm going node and then I'm doing sandbox.js. And then it's just saying uh, command not found. Command not found or, okay, so first. Or no, not command not found, it just says nothing. It just goes to the next prompt. Yeah. You might not have any console.logs. If it's not like giving you an error and it's just going to the next prompt, you probably don't have any console.logs in there. So one thing you might wanna do is just at like the top of your file, just do a console.log working. And then run your file. Do you see that working command? Cause in that way, you know, you at least are running the right file. And yeah, see, no. Wait, uh, wait. Let me slack this out as is. Yeah, mine's, mine's not even doing anything. So let's go ahead and look at this together. Um, I'm sure. It's probably more a, um, well, I don't know. Let's look at it together, Let's see what it is. So share your screen. All right. Debug this one together. So yeah, I, I like to sometimes, I think it's good to like do some debugging sessions together. Coding is so much just looking at errors and debugging that kind of thing. Um, because like you're probably, especially when you're starting out, a lot of these errors are errors you're all going to see at one point or another. So if you've seen them, it can be very useful to um, be like, oh yeah, I saw that. I, this is the thing I need to do. Cool. Okay, so go to VS Code. This is what I have so far. All right. What do you see at the top of your sandbox JS? Uh, the homework one on the file. Who can who sees who sees the problem or a potential problem? Anyone? It's so let's do this. Do do it because it's not failing. That's telling you you're like it's finding the file. So it's finding the file. You have this console.log working. Uh, I don't think he saved it, but. Yeah, that's the first thing I see. We'll save it. Uh, I always do that. All right, thank you. I always do that every time. I told you it happens to everyone. All right, thank you. That is by far the first, when you have an issue, that is like the first thing you need to do is make sure everything's saved. Because 
especially um, when we get a little further into coding and like you're trying to fix a bug and like it's working like when we start getting into those errors where like it doesn't break and like you change your code you fix it you forget to save it and you see like the output and it's still wrong and it's like um and you forgot to save it and then you go down the rabbit hole of like trying to figure it out it it, it can get um it can get bad <laughs> Cause you like, cause a lot of times people do that. They'll fix the issue. They'll forget to save it. And then they'll see it's not saved. And then they'll go start changing other parts of their code and just breaking those parts of your, their code. So it can get a little messy. Um, can I share my screen? Because I have a code for the homework. That's the number six in the functions where you had to take a name and an age. And I'm sure that we can, simplify it the way we just did with this one but i don't know how so if you like yeah. i can just show you guys and you you like walk me through it how to how to simplify it better cool yeah that's a good one so it's it's this one here like that's how i found i got it to work so it actually gave you know, gave the, the name can, uh, is age years old, but I just, that is pretty long because I didn't know if there was a better way to do it. Yeah, so, because here, here's the thing, you are, you have like these four objects and you're just manually like using like, hey, frank.name is frank.age. John.name is john.age. So, and yeah, here, I, I, I can... I can take over from here. Okay. I, I can share my screen because it's, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Um, I just like, I don't know how to move it from that to being better. And that's my, in my issue with some, with a lot of the code is I don't know how to simplify it. When I find the, the uh, resources online, it's normally, you know, a, a bigger string longer. Yeah. And I just have issues trying to fix it. So, and, and what I was trying to get at with that one, it's, and this is, so we can use what we have here. We can use these people. So we have a function that says whether or not they can vote. And actually, you know what I want to do with this function? Well, let, let's leave this as is and let's go to what yours, to your issue. So, so let's say I want, cause now I have people and I want to, um, you know, instead of them being objects, because this is not really um, human readable, right? Like if I were going to make a website, I don't want to like send back this like right. object looking thing. I want to give it in a nice, maybe formatted string. Right. But as far as like JavaScript land, this is, objects are much easier to work with than strings. Um, and when you do like working with databases, this is how you're going to get your data back. Now, one thing I want to kind of, let, let's just go back to this can vote function. I just want to show this and then we'll look at that. So let's say I, I call can vote and I pass it an object that has like first name. And then, you know, that's 21. And then I give it like, you know, P age. And you know, that's like a, a string and, you know, felony multiple or, or like whatever, like, yes. Now I'm gonna run this. I get undefined cannot vote. Well, when I define my function, I'm really expecting this, like this function needs a, to be given a object that has a name, which is a string, an age, which is a number, has felony, which is a Boolean. If you pass an argument that doesn't match that, there's no guarantee it's not going to work. I mean, it doesn't break, but. It gives you the undefined. Yeah, and because like I could say like false, 
like let's say yeah this person is really 23 and they don't have a felony but the the keys and data they don't match up um even if i do like age right like this is kind of like i'm going to get unexpected results so something with our functions we're trying to take like um we're just trying to abstract some of this reusable logic and a lot of the times you know we, we have to know what types of data we're working with so when in the homework where i'm like you know a person has a first name a last name and an age like in our case a person has a name age and has felony boolean so let's say we want to write a formatted we i want to write a function that takes one of these people's and returns a formatted string Okay. So I could, you know, maybe do like an about person. I'll do this as an arrow function just to switch it up. So I'm, I'm making a function. I'll call it like about person and it takes a person object. And then for this, I can just return. Um, I can do interpolation here you know, person, not name. Can I spell it return one minute around here? Oh, that's, I'm using a square bracket. Person dot name is, you know, person dot age. You know, it doesn't really matter what I put here. Here's old. And, you know, let's do this also. Like I can do more than one thing. Let's say I like want to say um, like that has a felony or does not have a felony. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna, we didn't talk about this um, yesterday, but let's say I want to I want to come up with like a specific message for whether or not they have a, a felony. So before I return the string, I could say like, "Hey, a person has felony." Because what I want to do is like um, have a let felony about. I'm just going to set that to an empty string. So if they have a, a felony, I'm going to say this is equal to has felony. else only about um does not have felony because felony is just a boolean i don't want to say true or false i want you know i want it to be readable right. so i create this variable here i don't even need to assign it i can just declare a variable here because what i want to do is declare the variable if they have a felony and you know has felony if they don't have a felony i want that string to be does not have felony and then i can interpolate that felony about there or wouldn't you need to do the has felony oh no because it's okay yeah there there i'm using the has felony that's the right problem. And okay. here I'm, you know, creating that string. Okay. And you know, so because and here here's another like just kind of going back to just this review and about functions. Like I'm writing a function that is taking one of these objects and it's converting it to a string. Now that you could say like this function is doing multiple things, right? It's really just doing one thing though, right? It's taking a person and it's converting it to a string. Right. So can you can you run that code now? Yeah. Well, yeah. So let's let's run this code. Now, now, why don't I see that message anywhere? On the net. Because you didn't call no... or have a console log. Right? Yeah, I've, I've never I've defined the function. Defining like think of the function as like a blueprint 
like defining it. It's just there. Now JavaScript has, now my program has access to it. I haven't actually called it. So this is the function definition. If I want to use it, I actually need to call it. And then you'd type a name? Yeah. So about person, Sally. And I'm going to do a console.log. You know, before about person. Just so we can like really see this in the console and then after. So there's my before about person and there's my after. Well, I'm calling it. Why is nothing happening? You don't have any console logs. Yeah. So this is actually, this function runs, it creates this string and then that string is just hanging there. And then it just goes away because I don't do anything with that. So I could either like console.log this directly. Console.log this about person. Sally is 17 years old and does not have a felony. And then, you know, another thing I might want to do instead of just logging this is I could like store this to a variable. And now about Sally is going to be that string. And then later in my app, I can, I can use that. So then you could just console log about Sally? Yeah. About Sally. That, that gave me the same thing. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Would you mind slacking that out? And I'm going to break it down in my notes here. Yeah. Thank you. And this actually, this leads up to a, um, like a good little demonstration. Cause what I want to do next is cause like, I kind of want to talk about like the return values and just go, just do a deeper dive into functions and just kind of some, how this, you know, just a real world example using these two functions we created. So we've created two functions. And I'm going to move this just so we can see these. We have this, you know, can vote and about person. So let's say in this about person. Um, well, actually, so I'm going to set sidetrack one second. So Something we did not talk about yesterday, and that's in one of your homework questions, is a, a ternary, right, as a ternary. So <clears throat> this is actually not the best way to do this um, right here. Um, and what's going on here is I'm declaring a variable and I want to, like, I want to give it like one or one of two values you know, has felony or does not have felony based on, um, you know, Boolean. Now this works, but there's, there's actually a cleaner way to write this. And that's with a ternary. And a ternary is kind of like a shorthand um, if else statement. So here's how a ternary works. You can say like, let, you know, sum var equals, and then you give it a, Condition, condition, and then you give it a question mark. And then this is um, returns if condition is truthy or, and then this is returned if so just as so how we could see how I could use this in the above example, I could say let, and I'm going to comment this out. So we have it as like an if else. You know, this works. I'm going to do the same thing, but with a ternary. 
as I just fill it up. Yeah, let's fill turn in. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to say let felony about equal. So I, then I give it my condition, which is hey, does the person dot has felony? Question mark. If they do have a felony, well, I want to use this string. If they don't have a felony, then I want the then the felony about will take the value of this string. I think when you first start, when you first um, look at a ternary, it might be the if else might be more readable to you. Um, and I'm totally fine. Like, I don't. Like I said, as of now, the important part with your code is you, you, you get it to work. But we're going to, um, there are definitely cases where ternaries are much cleaner. And, um, you know, I, and once you get used to them, they, they, they really do become much more readable. So I, I just kind of wanted to show you this. That's a ternary. It works, it's like doing the exact same thing that we're doing up here. So there's that. All right. So we have these two functions now. We have the can vote function and the about person function. Let's say I want to um, kind of combine these two functions. I want a function that takes a person, gives me this uh, about, and also lets me know if they can vote. So it's like combining these two functionalities. Um, so let's do this. Let's do a, um, you know, about, um, we'll just do another about person vote, voting status. We'll call it with voting status. It's kind of a long name, but whatever. Person. So what I can do here is I can like get, you know, I'm going to declare a variable. I'm going to call this let, because what I, let's say what I want to have this return is this string right here. Plus a message, you know, whether they can vote or not. So in this function, I can get this first string. So let, um, I'm just going to call this person out. Let's call it person string equal about person. person. Remember yesterday how it like, I was talking about how like words stop to look like words because you, you use them all the, the word, it's the same word all the time. I mean, this is how code's going to start looking where we're using person, like there's one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like there's a person eleven times in that section. <laughs> So let's just do this for now. I'm going to return this person string. So my about person with vote status, it takes a person, it calls this other function, this about person, sets it to a variable and just returns that variable. I'm just gonna comment this out. Let's just do another. Let's do this right here, console.log. Okay. And so I'm going to do let about Sally, about person with vote status, console.log about Sally, vote status. Okay, so let's run this. Actually, I want to get rid of all of these other logs just to really keep this clean. Okay, Sally is 17 year old and does not have the felony. Okay, so let me kind of explain what I'm doing here. So I'm creating this other function. I'm expecting it to do more down the road but something that's really going to benefit you as a developer is if you can learn how to just code in incremental steps. Don't try to do everything at once and then save your code and run it. Try to do like a small amount of work and then run it. Because really this function is just doing the exact same thing as about person is doing. But I know down the road I'm, I like have a to do, and that's like get you know vote string. But before I even try to do that, I'm just gonna see if I can get you know, about person string. And then to do, I'm gonna do like combine the two things. So this about person, remember this one is actually return, it takes a person object and it returns a string. My can vote function takes a person and it console.logs something. So if I do like um, let vote or whatever, let vote string equal, you know, can vote person. I do like a console. Um, maybe right here, I just want to see what the value of this string is. I'll just throw in a console.log right here for like debugging string. That's undefined. Because it's <coughs> it's not returning the value, it's just logging the value. And this is why console.logs, like it's it's it it it's nice because it will log it to the console, but this function is not really reusable. It's not really, how do I reuse this function in that regard? I can pass it a person and it will log something to me, but I can't do anything with its value. You have to return I, something? Yeah, if I have this return that string, Now, all of a sudden, if I do that, now I can see that like, I'm getting the string back right here. Cool, so now I'm getting, 
Now my can vote, since it's no longer logging the, the string, it's returning the string, I can use it in another function, set that to a variable. And then when I return this, I can just interpolate my person string, you know, maybe with a comma and then my vote string. Because another thing I could do, I could just take all this logic, do it right there, but I want to keep, this is, I want to keep um, my functions to doing one thing. So if all of a sudden, like I'm, you know, combining strings and checking to see if someone's age is over 18, that's, that's maybe a time where it's nice to like have that in a separate function. So now this, about person with vote status, what this function is doing is it's really just getting those two pieces of information and joining them together. Sally is 17 years old and does not have a felony. Sally cannot vote. And then I could say, hey, those are done. And this is what your code is very much going to start to look like where, you know, you're going to be writing functions and within those functions, you're going to be calling functions. And then you're going to be taking those return values of those functions and then doing stuff with them in your, you know, in your function. You know, I would say it's probably even better, it would be better style or like a better way to maybe do this can vote function is just to have this return a Boolean. That's gonna make this more reusable. I just give them true or false, whether or not the person can vote. But I think this is fine for now. Could you uh, do this again, but now using different names and a different type of, like has felony, like change all of that to something else and ha have it do the same thing that you just did right now so we can see it again? Do the same, ex let me select this. So instead of like voting and can and can't vote and felony, can you just do it with a whole different topic? Yeah, I and mean, we can look through some of the the homework examples and because it's 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 they really are kind of going to go through um, some of the similar ideas. All right. For sure. Yeah, we, we can we can totally go into that. But here's here's just one example. So maybe what I'll do with this example is take this note and I'll throw this in like my homework one lecture. So that's all there. Cool. And then I can clear out this sandbox. Um, cool. Like I said, I think so the, the when you just step back away from the code, and you kind of think about this whole, like what we're doing, like just in English, I think, you know, this, this, this is a pretty easy problem. Like, you know, can someone vote, you know, that's, are they over the age of 18 um, or over the age of 17 and, you know, whether or not they have a felony. And then, you know, if, if in English, if I were to give you that information, Right, I could give you a person and in your head, you could easily come up with this string, right? Like, let's just make, like, let's not think about code except minus the object. 
You know, what should I, you know, this should say Joe is 19 years old and has a felony. Joe cannot vote. Like you can do that like in your head, right? It's nothing complicated about that. That's like very basic. So what, I, what I'm trying to say is the more you can think about how you actually do that in your head and then that that's like the first step you want to do. Well, what I'm first doing is I'm seeing, you know, whether or not the person who I'm giving is over the age of 18 is 18 or older. And then I'm checking to see if they have a felony. And then, you know, if they have a felony, I'm going to create this string, like this, this word, this sentence. So if you can, if you can do, well, let me say it this way. If you can't do that in your head in English, there's no way you're going to code it. So when you get stuck on a problem, just think about like how, like, how does this work in the real world? Think about it. I like to say, just think about it in your native language. Don't think about it in JavaScript. Solve it in your head. Like, and explain it, to, like write it down on a piece of paper, something like that and then try to code it because really on like it i mean it makes sense right if you can't solve this in your head or like in english how the hell are you going to solve it in javascript in code cool yeah so let, let's let's um actually let's, let's take a break it's been we've been going a little long um Let's do like a 15 minute break, come back at, uh, how come I can't do math? It's like, just need to add an hour, uh, 11, 11, 10. Sure. 10, 10 for us Pacific folk. I'll also push this up to GitHub right now. Do I actually, do I have this on the repo?
Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So let's let's start going through some of the, the questions and just do these together. Um, I, I kind of want this to be not just only about solving the specific question, but maybe how to go about solving a problem. Because I think one of the, the things you're going to want to try to do, or like you're going to uh, notice, is um, I think definitely my experience has been like learning how to code has definitely like changed the way I think. It definitely more of like get you into like more problem solving type mindset, like more like engineer type thinking. It's it's actually also like pretty creative as well. So, and let me just kind of like yeah, try to give you some tips and tricks as we're going through some of these. So I'm gonna do this one first. Let's write a function that takes an array and returns the sum of all the numbers. So like I said, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure this like makes sense to you in like some way. So like, you know, I'm going to get an array of numbers. And then like, it's, if I have like one, two, three, four, I should be able to go through those, sum them up and return. What is that 10? Hey, uh, James, can I screen share and uh, try to explain mine and how I did mine? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. All right, I'm joining the Zoom meeting right now. And Mark, I gotta, I gotta say, you like your beaker picture. My, uh, my aunt, she had a little beaker doll at her desk when, uh, when she worked at Blood Services, and it just, it, it reminds me of her. And, and unfortunately, about a year ago, she passed away due to a, uh, a stroke. So that's kind, that's kind of funny. <laughs> no, I'm sorry to hear about that, but yeah, that's, I like beaker. Going through this course, that's kind of how you feel sometimes. So, the representation <laughs> of that. Yeah, she she had like I said, she had a little like a a doll that she'd leave on her desk or on her chair when she was away from her office. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah. All right. So, I have defined i as ten. So this is a variable I define let i be 10 and then it's saying i is greater than or equal to zero and if that's true then i would be i would be minus one and now i want to console log i so then now whenever i make sure i save it and whenever i run it it'd go 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 it, that that's a different problem. Uh, oh, okay. So what is this one asking? What uh, this is write a function that takes an array and returns the sum of all numbers. Oh, what number is that? It's number two under the okay. function section. Oh, okay. Then I guess I don't have the answer for that. Cool. All right. Let me stop this screen so yeah, you know, yeah, that, that first one was right for the, the I'm, I'm skipping over those first eight. So I think these ones are a little more, um, I think these ones were probably ones you're struggling with more. <clears throat> so yeah, this one, you know, write a function takes an array and returns all the sum numbers. So yeah, that the first thing is, you know, maybe come up with like a couple just in your head, like, what you might expect. Like, you know, if I have an array with one, two, three, four, that should give me back 10. If it's one, two, three, that should give me back six. Make sure you understand it. If you don't, if there's something unclear about the instructions, then, you know, ask me or a TA, like what, what exactly did you mean by this? Um, and it's the same thing in the real world when someone tells you to do something 
and you're a little unclear, you'll go up to like your product manager and be like, I'm a little unclear about this requirement. So that, that's like the first most important step is like really understanding the requirement. Cool. <clears throat> so another thing I like to like stress is just do incremental steps. So maybe the first thing I want to do is just, um, you know, write stub out the function. So let's say get some. That's going to take like, you know, some nums. Dot log here, you know, get some. Run this no dot sandbox.js. Can you quickly go over because I put function before the name of the variable and you use a constants? Yeah, so two ways we can write these. And I, I know it's kind of like annoying, but I, I kind of want to have show you both. Like I like kind of sticking with one, but when you go look on like Stack Overflow, um, you're just going to see both. So you can write it as like a function declaration. Or like a arrow function. So these are the two way, like these two functions as is, like th those are the same. So you can, you can do it either way. Just different syntax. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. And then I'll leave that there as a reference. So yeah, first things first, just, you know, get, get it set up. I, I, can't like, you know, explain how many times, <clears throat> you know, I come in, someone has a question about, you know, their code. Just kind of want to like, just throw some random stuff in here. I guess it doesn't really matter. Whatever. I come in like someone's asking for help with their like, you know, their function. And they have all this work done and they're like, why isn't it working? And it's like, well, you're not even calling the function. And that's showing to me, it's like, man, you've been trying to do all of this work without testing it. You're definitely gonna get yourself in a lot of pain, like trouble if you do that. So do these small steps, just write out a function and just see if you can like log something in it. Cool. Well, let's see if I can like log the array in here. Sweet. So, so if I make it this far, you know, it's like, hey, I define my function. I, I now know how to pass the array to my function. You know, I could call it multiple times. And so I could, I could actually even have these little things in the back of my mind, you know, like, even though it's not done, I know that should be 10. <clears throat> I know this should be six. Cool. But right now, all I have is I'm passing the array of numbers to this function. But that, that to me, that, that's semi-functional. Cool. Any questions on this? So, <clears throat> and another thing I could do, so we could console.log nums, and then I could like return just for now one. So let's do like let sum one equals that, let sum two equals this, and then I could console.log sum one, sum two. Cool. 
So right now what I've done is I've, <clears throat> I've written a function that takes in an array. Right now it's just returning one, but it's returning a number. So once again, I'm a little more close to just like how I want this to look. Cool. So now I can be like, um, now this is kind of like more the, the, the meat of the problem is solving this. So once again, let's, let's take a step back. Let's not think about JavaScript. Let's say I have this list of numbers. I will just write it as an array. How would you explain to me in English how you would add these numbers up? It's harder than it sounds. <laughs> You know, uh, Austin, I think you were talking, or were you, or did you sneeze? I was just like one plus two plus three plus four, if that's what you're doing. <clears throat> but yeah, so that's you, you, yeah, you add them all up, but kind of as you're going through like one plus two, you're kind of you're, you're doing that, you're doing like one plus two, like that equals three, right? Right, and then you do three plus three, and that's six. And then you do yeah. six plus four. So what you're doing when you do that in your head, you're, it's like you're kind of keeping track. You're, you're, you're like keeping track of the sum. So you like you have like this sum variable in your head that you're keeping track of, and you're just going through each number and you're adding the number to that sum. So that's what we want to do here. <clears throat> we want to keep that little. Um, we want to create that something in our brain, in our code. So I'm just going to create a variable called sum. And then I want to go through each of the things and add each number to that sum. So then we could use our for loop we learned about to iterate through in an array. Um, I is less than or equal to nums length. So now it becomes like a coding question. Like, how do I go through each thing in an array? <clears throat> if you get stuck on that, you could Google that. Like, how do I iterate through each thing in an array? You could find the answer for that on like Google if you get stuck on that. So I kind of remember you saying, don't use a for loop to iterate through an array. And you said like, do each or something. Do I, is that my <clears throat> For sure, um, for, we're gonna like the for each, that's gonna come into this lecture. So yeah, I'm gonna do this as a for loop because that's probably how you did it. And then we'll do it as a for each. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, you, you are correct on that. <laughs> so, but with the for loop, I want to, yeah, I want to go through each of my things and then add that thing to my sum. So I grab my nums. I, because that's my numbers, that's an array. I'm going to index it to grab each value and then add it to the sum. And then I just want to return not the one, but the sum. And you know, maybe here, maybe that this step right here might even be a bit much. Maybe for now, I just want to console.log and see, I want to, <laughs> to make sure I can grab each number. Like, how do I grab each number? Cool, because now, now my code's like breaking. That's good. Cannot read properties of undefined or reading four. Oh, this is right here. <clears throat> that little thing right there. Maybe I only want one of these going at a time, so my console's not all messy. That's not defined now. So one, two, three, four. So now I've figured out how to, <clears throat> how to like grab each value. And then, yeah, now I can do like the sum plus equals nums at i. Then I could return sum. Cool. <clears throat> so now I'm getting a NAN. So 
So now I need to go debug, like, why am I getting in the, like this NAND? So I could go back, and this is why like these small steps are important. I could go back and be like, what could be causing that NAND? So you see, as I'm going through that, that's one, two, three, four, undefined. I don't want to be logging undefined. Why is that undefined? Well, let's, I'm gonna step into node just to show you. Let's say we have some array, you know, that has like one, two, like one and two in it, it just has two things in it. So if I grab the last thing, that's two, but like if I grab something like the index, like 99, that's undefined because that's not in the array. So what I'm doing wrong here, and if I like looked a little more clearly at my log, I would have seen, hey, with one, two, three, four, undefined. I maybe would have caught that error sooner. Then I could be like, oh, I need a less than or equal to, or I need to minus one from that. Exit out of my node, run this file again. I'm getting now to undefines. Oh, wait. Sorry, I did this wrong. It's minus one, less than length minus one. How am I? Okay, see. I think actually this is my undefined. Okay, there's. <clears throat> All right. I see what's going on here. See, this is where you get yourself into trouble. I'm doing right now. One, two, three, four. Okay, perfect. There's my log. I thought that's what I had beforehand, but maybe I forgot to save something. So now I'm logging one, two, three, four, no undefined. Let's also just like plus equal my sum. And you know, I could console.log sum here. Um, why do you uh, why do you have nums dot space length? Is it nums space dot and then the dot no space in between the dot and the length? It's not dot length. Yeah, there's no space there. Oh, it looks like a space to me. No. Oh, okay. Cool. <clears throat> so what's going on here, I'm still getting man. So I have this let sum. So another, so this gets into like, I'm trying to debug this because this is what happens. So let's go ahead and each time, let's do a nice little message. Let's log sum. And let's log. Actually, I'm going to do this at the end. Let's log this. So my sum is nan and it's one. My sum is nan, but my number's two. My sum is nan, my number's three. My sum is nan, my number's four. Hmm. Let's try logging some before I do the math. That first time I do some, that's undefined. So I'm doing undefined plus one, which is not a number. And then I'm adding these numbers to Nan. So I'm just going to continually get Nan. Any ideas on what I need to do? It's kind of like this, this first thing right here. This sum is undefined. I think the I needs to be less than or equal to. So I, I am going through, <clears throat> let me get rid of the sum. I am when I do log this, I am I am going through each of my numbers. 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So like I am, I, I know I'm, I'm kind of iterating through all of the things correctly. Do you have to initialize sum as a number? Yeah, I, I need to give it a value. Or a value? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it it's declared, but right now, what is, what's the value of sum? The value of sum is undefined. If I do undefined- Set to zero, right? Yeah, I need to set that to zero. And then that's 10. But it seemed like, because when we think about it in English, it's a very simple problem. But then as we try to code it, you know, there's these things where it becomes very difficult. And then like the for loop makes things a little more confusing because it, I even, you even saw me got like mixed up. Was it supposed to be minus one or plus one? Um, but yeah, we, we kind of, the, the point here was use your console, like this is where console.logs are useful. You can use them to kind of explore what things look like in your code. But now that I figured it out and I got it working, I'm gonna get rid of my console.logs in there. So you can think of console.logs are there to help you kind of like debug and explore what your code looks like while it's running. But now that I have it working, now I can recomment these two out. Oh, and there's my 10 and six. All right. So let's do this again, but with a for each loop. Because in my mind, I hate for loops. They're uh, just ugly. Because something we do a lot of is um, iterate over an array and perform a function. And, and do, I'll just say do stuff. Right, I want to go through each thing in my, I want to do this exact same thing right here where I have this sum variable. I wanna go through each thing and add that thing to the sum. So we're gonna use a for each loop that goes through every item in an array and performs function you pass it the function to perform so i'm not i'm not going to write this in a function yet let's just do that same logic so let's say i have let sum equal 0 then i have sum array 1 2 3 4 I'm gonna call this for each function. For each. I swear it's not for case. Okay, wait, I forget if this is, I'm having a brain fart right now. I wanna see if it's uppercase or lowercase really quick. Yeah, if it's uppercase, I don't know why it's saying lowercase. Okay. So here's my array. Just like I can call dot length on an array, I can call this for each method. For each, I'm going to pass this a function. So here's the syntax of that. So we do like an arrow function that looks like this, where we give it the thing, arrow, curly brackets.
what is this this thing? So this is just a function. I'm just calling this parameter thing. This is like the current thing it's that is being iterated over. So let's just run this function as is. We're getting an error. Cannot read properties. Undefined for each. So that's line 33. Let's save that. I don't think I saved that. Okay, no, that's the same thing. Is it really lowercase? You can't just define a variable, or you can't just define an array like that, can you? I was pretty sure you could, but maybe oh. maybe it wants it on a variable. I guess it does. Okay. Yeah, I guess I do need to store that to a very like I need to. Uh, yeah, I guess I do because what this is actually it this is actually creating like an object behind like an array behind the scenes. So I guess I do need to actually store this to a variable first because there's some stuff going on behind the scenes here. I swear I've done that before though. Yeah, I guess you can't. But yeah, in, in reality, you're never going to like, the reason why I didn't know that, can, like you would never write something like that because your, your arrays are gonna just be in variables because you're never going to like hard code and an array that's pretty rare like it's going to be created for you somehow but when we I, i'm like okay it's in i'm pretty sure you can do that in ruby though but all right i'll just get we can't do it in javascript that's the point here <laughs> figured it out um so is does your code work now because i ran i might it might be because i have my up here, hold on. Yeah, so my code is working. Oh, wait, and one thing I'm going to do. Oh, yeah, this, okay. this, this so I store it to a variable, which is creating an array behind the scenes. Like it's an array object behind the scenes. So that's, man, I really, th let me see if I can, I'm just, this is dot. Let me see if I can do dot link on it. Yeah, you can call dot length on an array, but you can't call for each. Okay, I'll look at that later. But yeah, let's just store it to a variable and then we can call for each. And now we're going through each of the things. Now I don't have to worry about like the less than or equal to minus one nums dot length, this I plus plus. I don't have to call it nums at i. Like, I can call this variable anything. So let's maybe call this once again, like nums one, nums one dot for each. So instead of calling this thing, maybe I call this like num, because that's what it is. It's a number. I could even call it a number. A little more clear. See, I was trying to do this yesterday, and the thing that I ended up finding out is that basically to use a for each loop, you have to have an array already present, like it already has to exist. But with a for loop, you don't necessarily have to have something. Um, no, you would have to have it with a for loop. But I, I miss, yeah, how would... You, you, you would have to have a for like a variable. Oh, a variable. Oh, yeah. You don't need it. Sorry. You don't need an, an array to do a for loop. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You still need a variable of some kind, but I feel like, you, you don't need correct a me if I'm wrong, but like for the for each, you have it has to be an array, right? The variable has to be an array. Yes. The for each. So 
I have an array. Like, um, let's just let's talk about this really quickly. So let array equal like one, two, three. And then let's have like a person object equal domain, whatever, Tony, and age. And let's actually just throw these in node. And you can just watch this. You don't necessarily need to type along with this. So in node, I, I, I've just thrown two variables in here, ARR and person. Now I can do something like ARR.length, right? An array has a length, person.length. Person, like an object, so a person, this is a object. An object doesn't have a dot length property on it. That doesn't really make sense, right? Um, it's the same way like I can do like array at zero, but I can't do like person at zero, but I can do person dot name. Person has a name. Um, does that make sense? So as we're working with different data types, they have different functionality. They have different methods built onto them. So yeah, the, the for each method is specifically on in an array. So yes. And all of these methods we're going to be talking about, like the for each filter reduce, they all are called on arrays. Cool. So now I have this um, for each loop. I'm logging the number. So now I can just do my sum plus equals number. Console.log sum. And there it is. So if I wanted to have this, so now I have like the log, I'm kind of doing this like a different way where like I figured out how to go through an array, do the for each loop and come up with the sum. But this is only working for this one specific array. So if I wanted to make this root work for any array, I could wrap this in a function. So we call this function get sum one because I already have a sum function. I'm just going to wrap all of this in this block. And instead of this being nums one, this can be whatever. This is just any number array. But let's just call this numbers. And I'm going to do numbers dot for each. So here I would say I'm expecting numbers to be an array of numbers. That's why I called it numbers. So now I run this and let me comment out these two logs. So why is this not working anymore? Wouldn't you have to console log get someone? What? Would you console log instead of some? Would it be get someone? I, instead of console logging, I yeah, I think what you're saying, like I need to call get someone, right? Yeah, in the console log. You mean right here? All right. So remember here I'm defining the function. So once again, this is the function definition. So I could do just another quick check, like console.log working, or like here. I just want to see, am I calling the function? I don't see that here in my log. So I have my function defined, but I'm not calling it. So get some 
one, let's call it. Cool. Now it's blowing up on me. So I, I do log the here though. See how that here is logged? So this can be useful in knowing where your code got. Like I know my code got here, at least to here, and then I had an error. And it's actually telling me right here, line 43. Cannot read properties undefined reading for each. What it's saying is it's, and it's saying that it's, um, this numbers is undefined. So it can't read any properties of undefined. Let me, let me show you what that, like, let me duplicate this error, undefined dot for each. Not read properties undefined reading for each. See how that, that's breaking right here. So what this is letting me know is this numbers right now in this function is undefined. Why is my numbers undefined? Let's let's actually let's you didn't set it equal to anything. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's make this variable numbers cool. So now I have this numbers variable, right? Let's run this uh, run thing dot exit. Numbers dot for each. Wait, numbers is not defined. That's weird. Okay. So let's do this. Let's comment out this. Let's just console.log numbers. Undefined. Don't you have to put it in, you have to call the function and then put numbers as you're calling it, right? Like in the parentheses. Yeah. That's exactly what I need to do. But yeah, I just want to show this because I think this really confuses people. Because line 39, I log numbers. Boom, it's right there. Line 43, I'm logging numbers. It's undefined. Well, let's actually pass get some a func an array. And let's do this so it's like a lot different. Let's do like 9, 10, 11. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 9, 10, 11. When I console.log numbers, that is 1, 2, 3, 4. When I console.log numbers here, that is 9, 10, 11. So you basically have two variables both named numbers yes different these two things are not the same they have the same name but this numbers parameter is scoped to the function you can think of it like overriding Oh, is this that local global thing? Yeah. Local versus writing the numbers, the variable. So let's say I switch this one to nums. So in my function definition, I'm now changing the name to nums. Well, cool. Now one, two, three, four is defined. But if I switch this to numbers, now numbers like is now that kind of like over it, that's no longer referencing that. It's now this new thing of the thing I'm passing to the function. Yeah, so there's your, your first little taste of like scoping. It's like it doesn't care that they're both named the same because one is global and one is local, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, this this numbers is like scoped. Logging both. Yeah. When you run it. 
And likewise, let's let's say I, I call this back to nums outside of the function. Nums is not defined. So that's the nums is only scoped to the function. So I can't use it outside of here. But yeah, then you can get into this confusion. Well, what if they're both called numbers? Well, numbers in this function is going to relate to whatever was passed to this function, not this variable. So if I actually want this get sum to use this array, well, I need to pass it. And now there it is. That's that can be tricky to wrap your head around. Cool. So now we can do our numbers dot for each. Would it just be best not to name them same thing? Um. No, I mean not necessarily. I'd say that's not a reason. I, I think for, let me say this, for if, for you while you're learning, um, yes, if that helps that, um, you know, that, that's fine with me if, that, if, if that's like a good rule for you. But it's, it's more important that you understand, it, it's really important that you under, like, understand what's going on here. instead of like using like naming like naming things differently so you don't run into this problem cuz the the important part to know is that this numbers that i'm defining here my function this is just that variable that i can use here and how i actually like give that that parameter a value is when i pass it an argument i know when you are looking at this like, I would say just spend some time. <laughs> well, let, let's get this finished and then spend some time with this really looking at those parameters. Because like I said, this, this gets tricky. So I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to just comment out those for your reference. We're almost close. So like the get sum, I mean, I'm fine with this if you do it in your homework, but if, once again, if I'm just logging this, it doesn't really make this function useful because maybe I want to, let's say I want to take two arrays and I want to add the sums together of two arrays. So I could say like, um, let you know S1 equal that because I want to add these two together. Maybe we'll get some. So let's do console.log s1 plus s2. Like, see how they're logging 30 and 40, but when I try to add those together, I'm getting in because these are actually, if you log something, this function isn't returning anything. So if I don't return anything, a function is going to return undefined by default. So there's my undefined. So what I want to do is instead of, or what's gonna probably be more than like 99% of the time, you're not gonna log the sum, you're gonna to want to return the sum because then I can use those two value, then I can like get the sum of two different arrays and then I can like store those to variables and then I could add those two variables together. Yeah, once we get to React, there's, 
console.logs are solely going to be for debugging purposes. They're going to have no functionality. Right now, as we're using Node and, and we're using the terminal where we need, like where part of your homework is to like log the values, we need it. But yeah, we're going to stop using them pretty quick. So that is solving this with the for each loop. So I'm going to slack out these two examples, or this first question with those two examples. Um, what time is it? Any, any questions on this? I have a quick question. Um, it's just about the plus or equals. Like what exactly does that do? Oh, the plus equals. Okay, so the sum, this plus equals is the exact same thing as me saying sum equals sum plus number. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the current value of my sum right here, and I'm going to add the number to it. And then I'm going to reassign that to the sum. Oh, OK. This, so it changes as the number changes. Yeah, so like um, if, we, if, we, and if we were to start out with like this array, one, two, three, four. So first time through the for each loop, my number would, my sum would be zero and my number would be one. So zero plus one is one. So, and then I reassign sum to one. Okay. Then we go to the next number, which would be two. So my sum is one, one plus two is three and so forth. And there's my three. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and the plus equals just the shorthand for that. Got it. Cool. Um, let's do another one. I think this might be the last one we do and then we'll take a break because then I want to get into more of the for each map and reduce. So let's do one more. Is, is there a homework problem of one of the functions you want to do? Maybe do the swap in one. So write a function that swaps the last and first item of an array. So once again, first thing you're going to want to do is kind of figure out if you understand what actually you're trying to solve. So let's say I have an array A, B, C, D. I'm going to want to, you know, swap it out so that new array now looks like this. D, B, or whatever, C, A. So let's do this as an arrow function. So let's do swap. So this can take really any array. I don't, it can be array of numbers. It doesn't really matter. And now I want to swap these out. So first of all, let's just kind of do what I've talked about and just like um, make sure we got this working, console.log. Now maybe I want to log the array and then I call this function. And then S1 is not defined. Did I comment something out here?
Just now I commented out these or deleted these two things. Get someone. Yeah, I just got to fix this. I accidentally deleted those. Okay, cool. Did I, did I, I slack those out, right? Maybe I need to reslack those out because I might have broken that. Yes, I did. Okay, I'm going to edit this because that's broken. So that last thing in Slack is broken. So let me just delete that, and repaste it. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to get rid of this part right here. Okay, so this is kind of working. You know, I have my function defined. I'm calling swap. I'm getting undefined. And let's just let's just review this weird terminology or this scoping thing again. Let's say I have an array that is one, two, three, four. Still undefined, right? So what I really need to do is I need to pass that there. Now that's how I could get that working. Cool. So now that I got it set up, now I can kind of think about how I want to, you know, do this. Well, let's take first item, move it to last. Take last item, move it to first. All right, that's how I'd swap it out. Just take the first one, move it to the last, take the last one, move it to the first. Kind of described it in English. But this is, once again, like I said, describing it in English is going to get you a lot of the way there. It doesn't always, because does anyone disagree with this logic? Sounds pretty solid, right? So now let's figure out how to do that. So let's do like, um, so let's grab the first item. So let, you know, first item that equals like array at zero. Right. So let's take that first item and move it to the last so we can do, oh, sorry, array. So let's get our array and then our array dot length minus one. Remember that's our light last item. Set that equal to the first item. Okay, and then let's grab our last item. And actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and console.log our array. So here's my array, I have one, two, three, four. We can get rid of this log. And you know, something you can do with your logs, have these be, like these are there to um, help you out. So if you need messages to kind of help show you what you're doing, add them. So I could say like, you know, array before swap. I could say like array after swap. You know, it's just there to help you understand what you're doing.
Well, so my array before swap is one, two, three, four. My array after swap is one, two, three, one. Cool. We are pretty close. So now I can do my array you know, at zero. Let's um, take the, and let's grab the last item. That looks right, like that is, that's me. Hey, that's saying, hey, take the last item and move it to the first. But what did I do right here? I kind of, can you guess it? I heard something. I you already said it equal. What? You already sent the value to it, right? Yeah, I kind of like, I set the value equal to the one. So like I kind of clobbered that four, like that four is gone. That last item is gone because I reassigned it to the first item. So it's, it's one of those things like when I described it in English, I was close, but I, my logic was I, I need to be more specific. So computers are like very literal, you know, so it's actually like, I need to like remember the first and last item, store those to variables and then swap them. So I need to grab my last item before I swap anything. And now I can swap them. So I store the first item in a variable, I store the last item in a variable, and then I can go ahead and change up my array. I'm gonna introduce a new concept right here with this, this question. So um, the concept of mutation slash side effect slash pure function. Now, this is gonna be a brief introduction. We're gonna spend a lot more time talking about this. So I, I just mainly want you to kind of focus on like the high level concept about what I'm talking about here. Um, not so much the syntax, but because um, this is going to be important once you get a little further into like React and stuff. Right now, it's not a huge deal. But notice, I want you to notice that my array itself, this array variable is changing, right? Like this function doesn't return anything. It takes an array and changes that array. This is known as a side effect or a mutation. Because it, it changes, it's changing something else. It's changing a variable outside of it. It's changing the value of the variable. Make sense? Like I have this one array variable, I'm logging before the swap and after, and it's that, that array has actually changed. Cool. So what's gonna happen in like, um, and we're gonna talk about this when we talk about like map and filter, and when we get to React, in React, there's gonna be a lot of times where, uh, and, and it, it's kind of just in code. It's, it's not like 100%. I don't want to say this is a firm rule. It, it's totally fine if, it, if this happens, but um, I'll, I'll say this. Many times, like 
mutations are bad and we don't change anything or we don't want to change the value of a given variable. So let's let's think about this in just in in words in in English. Let's say I gave you a list of numbers and I wanted you to do them. What might you, what would you do? I'm kind of looking for like a word. Like you want to do the same thing, you want to swap it out, but you don't want to change that original list. Like let's say I have a, like I have a grocery list and I want you to give me a new list, but I don't want you with that list sorted, but I don't want you to change the original list. What would you do? So would you du duplicate? Yeah, duplicate. You create like a clone of that list. That, that, that's the word I was looking for, a duplicate or a clone. So we can do the same thing in code. So we can come in here and so I'll do the call this swap one. So this is going to be what's called a pure function, or let's just say this does not have a side effect. Let's write this so it doesn't have a side effect. Const swap swap one equals we take an array. And what I'm going to do is yeah, say const let's do clone array. There's a pretty simple way to clone arrays in JavaScript. Um, I can just, I, I write my curly brackets and I can call do what's called spreading out over in, the, in the, my array. Let's just call that ARR. So, it's, so I'm expecting this function to be given in an array. And then what I can do is I can clone that array with this syntax. So now this clone ARR variable is going to be a duplicate. So that's like me creating that clone shopping list. But there now I have two different arrays. Should I? How does that top function work without returning anything? Uh, it's um, it's a it's so. This is definitely a little uh, more advanced topic. Um, it's called so in JavaScript. There's certain about there's certain type of variables that are called. Um, there's there's primitive variables and then there's reference variables. So how this is actually working when I pass the array, I'm actually passing a reference to the array, and then this function goes in and it actually changes that array in memory. So, oh, okay. So it, it's ch it's changing that array in memory. So it's actually it's physically changing it, because what I'm really passing is the reference to the array, and so it actually goes and changes it, and so then it's changed. But with this one, what we're going to do, we're going to clone the array. So now I have a completely different copy, and you know I already have this logic here that swaps it. So let's do um, swap clone array. So now I can swap the clone array. I don't care if I mess that up because that's a clone. But this one now I do need to return. Since I'm like defining this clone array in here, I actually need this to like return it. It's copy 
three. So let's do, I won't do any more confusing terms. Let's just do numbers uh, two, three, four, five. Const, or let's just do a let swapped nums equals. We'll do our swap one function and pass it the nums. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to console.log nums and console.log swap terms. And to make this more readable, maybe I'll do a little message for myself. See, my nums array is unchanged, but I now have this new array swap nums where those two numbers are swapped. I will slack that one out. So don't worry, this don't worry so much if you are a little confused about this whole mutation side effect thing. I think a lot of these concepts you kind of just have to like marinate on. And you have to honestly, I think one of the best things that I think is really useful for coding and learning things is sleep a lot of these concepts you honestly need to like go to bed <laughs> like go to sleep and then like the next day you wake up and it's like um it's a little more solid it will just stick a little more the next day i don't know well, how you... oh, never mind. like you have a question no i was going to ask you to scroll down a little bit but i just remembered you put it in slack so i'll just look at there how is like this example right here? I, I'm. How is this feeling? Is this just, or is this? You're kind of getting it. Like scale of thumbs down to thumbs up. How are you feeling about this? Which one are you talking about? The swap or the? Yeah, the swap one. And like also because the swap also has like you know the mutation side effect stuff. Fine. Let's let's take a break. Um, going a little longer. Let's take a shorter break because we're kind of running out of time. Let's come back at twelve twenty-five. So I want I want to go over the homework and go over some examples so you can move on. Take, take a quick little five, six minute break. And I'll, I'll stick around if anyone has questions. So I'm looking at how I did my swap function and I think it is a mutation, but I used like the push pop methods in the shift unshift. Cool, yeah, the, uh, to make it work, but that would be mutating it, right? Yes, push and pop mm, mutate the array. And like I said, for right now- For homework, not, that's fine, but yeah, in the real world, you wouldn't want to do that. Um, that That's not, I mean, they, they have those methods. There, there's definitely times, yeah, you, I'm not saying mutations are bad all the time. Mm. Uh, like I said, like, yeah, push and pop, those are methods defined, you know, by the JavaScript, you know, in JavaScript and they're mutating the array. If they were bad, they wouldn't have them on there. It's, right. It, it can be like, it, definitely when we get to React, there are cases where side effects are bad. It's like, no, we don't do that. But other cases, it's like, no, that's maybe what you want to do. You want to 
pop that thing off the array and change it. So, gotcha. Okay. But yeah, with like JavaScript, if we want to like remove something from an array, we like create a copy of the array and then we remove it from the copy mm -hmm. and return the that. So nothing gets lost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, got a I have a I have a quick question. So I did the number eight, but I like super simplified it, and I'm having trouble like turning it into a function. Can you help me like turn it into a function? Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. Do you want to uh, number eight? 
the one that we just did where we swapped the first and last items of an array. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, you want to share? Do you want, or you could share your screen or you could Slack me the code. Okay. Um, I can do both. So let me send it to you first. Like in a personal message or just in our yeah, DPL? Yeah, in, in the DPL. Okay. So that everyone can see it. All right. I'll, I'll just go ahead and sh throw this in here. Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this. Cool, so let's, um, and this is, and like I'd say this is for everyone, if, you, if you've gotten to a point where I'd say this is like an acceptable-ish answer. Like if you don't have it in a function, but you're kind of doing the logic and you're struggling, I would say this would be like, you know, that's kind of complete and that's like good work. If, if it's doing the thing that I'm kind of asking for and you're just struggling with like maybe putting it in a function. That's, that's kind of what, like when I was saying like, hey, if you get like 50% of it done, but that 50% is working, and I think that's kind of what you want to be doing. Okay, so you have it here. Yeah, so here you have like the array where you have the last and the first, and then you swap them. And it looks like it is swapping. Um, I'm a little curious what's going on here. So I just did the first index at zero, which is the word first. And then the second part, I did the last index in the array and then I just equaled it to swap around. Yeah, okay, so this is, I'm, really, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. You have your away array swap. I'm a little, I'm actually a little confused how this is working. <laughs> to be honest, what is, did you Google this? Was this like from a, so I Googled how to swap like elements in the array or the first element and the second element or last, I can't remember. I'm trying to, uh, I don't know what's going on. What? Array. Well, I mean, if you're, I'll need to look at that, but yeah, I could throw this into a function, so function so you just have this like you're using this variable called array swap mm -hmm. and it, it looks already like it's just good to go because you're using that variable's length which is nice so i could just call this swap and since like in your logic this is like your logic where you're doing everything is this line of code i'm just going to call that variable that and then throw that inside of here. And then I think that is mutating in place. So it's changing the array. So here, what I need to do is now I need to, so this array, this array swap on line six is not that thing on line two. Actually now, since this in, now I put this in a function, now I need to, call your function and actually pass it that variable. And there we go. But now, you know, with this function, it should be able to work with any kind of array. Let's, let's, let's do that here. One, two, three.
And let me just call this X, just so it's not maybe, I don't wanna confuse people. So now this works with, um, and the nice thing about putting this in a function is now I can pass this any array. So I, I can now do it with one, two, three, that's three, two, one. We can do it first, second, third, last. That's last, second, third. So essentially what I did was I took that logic you had that actually does the swapping mm -hmm. that I need to figure out. I wanna see something, I wanna see if this works. Well, that is actually doing something. Okay, I, I honestly don't know what's going on there. I'm looking at that and I'm like, how is that working? Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna look at that later. But you did, so the, the thing was you had that one line working. So all I did was I wrapped that in a function um, and you know, just to, and cause you, you were reusing that array swap cause you had it working with that one particular array, but now I can have this work with any array. And maybe if for now, I'll just call that Y. The same thing. So that's how you could throw that into a function. Okay. Sorry, I meant to format that. Let me, sh let me give you a quick little trick in Slack as well. Um, in Slack, if you want to, like, you know how my code, like I format it. All you need to do to format it is do three ticks. So see back ticks one, two, three, and then you can copy and paste code. And it, it gives you that formatting. Cool. I was actually gonna ask how you did that because I saw you do it like all the time when you share your screen and I was confused on what was happening. I thought you were doing the, uh, the quotes, but. <laughs> you also do, if you do um, one back tick, it makes it red. Hmm. One back tick is red. Yeah, the three, you can do a whole, like a whole block quote in there. Oh, that's cool. Sweet. Okay, so let's get started with um, this homework two section. And I'm just going to, I'll throw it out in Slack and then we can paste it. So, and, and I will like, so as, and this is just kind of the nature of this course. It is a lot of information. I mean, so as we go over these concepts, I know I'm throwing a lot at you. Um, like I said, the weekends, I really highly recommend you spend, you know, I really feel like I'm really efficient for like two, three hours. So even when I had a job, like I kind of like to work a couple hours during the weekend, just because I could get a lot done in like two or three hours, and then I call it good, and take a break. Um, so I would recommend spending a couple hours weekend this weekend going over everything we've talked about this week because it's a lot, and then next week it's just going to be more new stuff. So let's look at this homework, and let's also look at. Um, these functions like map, reduce, filter, sort, every sum, these things. Okay, so for this homework, I'm giving you an array of characters. So this is an array of objects and notice how all these objects are uniform in their type. Like they all have name, height, mass, eye color, gender, and then the type of data they are are the same. Like Luke's, like the name's a string. Height's a number, mass is a number, eye colors is a number, or sorry, eye colors is a string, gender's a string. Um, so let's, let's just do a little practice. How would I get um, Darth Vader's mass from this array? Uh... Is it the 
the back tick with the uh, dollar sign to make the Java, and then do you do is it characters dot like eye color or is it going to be person? So it's well. First of all, how do I grab th just this object from characters? Let's start small. Oh, okay. Because characters, this isn't an array, right? Right. So how do I grab Darth Vader? The characters uh, at one. Yeah. So yeah. Dot log. Dot log. Characters at one. Go ahead. <laughs> Code. I call this HW2. Yeah, cool. So there we go. Characters at one, that's Darth Vader. So that's the characters isn't in an array. But then now I have that one thing, which is an object. So how do I grab, like, what did I say? The mass? I do dot mass. And there we go. There's 136. Okay. Okay. 